Just two months after fighting for the welterweight title, Robbie Lawler returns to the cage at UFC 173. Hello and welcome into MMA Live Extra. I'm Phil Murphy and joining me now is Lawler's opponent May 24th at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, Jake Ellenberger. Jake, thanks for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. Now, you were originally supposed to fight Tarek Safadine at UFC 172, but that fight was scratched due to an injury to Safadine. This is the second mm -hmm. time a fight against him has been put off due to injury. Before we get to the fight against Robbie, how much does a fight against Safadine interest you in the future? You know, it's, it's frustrating, but at the end of the day, you know, injuries are just things that we can't, uh, that happen, you know, and, and you really can't, <clears throat> things you can't really control. So, um, <laughs> Safadine and I, we're just not in the cards, I guess. Now, your brother Joe makes his UFC debut at UFC 172. What was your reaction when you found out that you wouldn't be fighting on the same card as him? You know, it was uh, initially a little bit disappointed because we wanted to be on the same card, but I'm sure down the road we still will. Um, but for me, it's a little less stressful. You know, I can I can focus more on him and, and, uh, and be in his corner. So um, a little, I guess, it's a little less stressful for for probably my mom and, and our family. But uh, as far as from my from my point of view, it's 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 okay. So uh, you know, at the end of the day, which we're, the only the only worry is, is for Joe to get the W. Now take us inside your training camp. What's a typical week look like for Jake Ellenberger? Well, you know, a typical week is, is uh, it, it, when you get inside eight weeks uh, before a fight, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty uncomfortable. There's a lot of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like any other job. There's a lot of things you don't want to do. You got to do that you don't want to do. Um, and especially when, in, when competing at this level, you know, I, I know what it takes to, to succeed. And, and it's, a, it, it's quite intense and, and it's, it's quite demanding. But, you know, I always look forward to you know, I look forward to getting out of bed and, and waking up in the morning because I know the opportunities ahead of me and, uh, you know, and, and my focus has always been on that goal to become world champ. Once you step into the octagon May 24th, what approach do you think gives you the best chance of beating Robbie Lawler? You know, Robbie's a pretty straightforward guy. You know, he, he's, uh, he comes forward and, and he loves to fight. Um, there's not really, uh, there's no games with him. So, you know, for me, I, I feel like that brings the best out in me when, when, I, when I'm fighting guys who are who create opportunity and also are not afraid to engage. Um, you know, at the same time, being a little more, feeling a little more threatened too. Um, and, a, and a guy like Robbie, he's a dangerous guy. And you know, I really think that's going to bring the best out in me. Yeah, this fight seems like it could have the makings of a back and forth brawl. How do you approach someone with Lawler's knockout pedigree? Well, you know, with a guy like Robbie who, who's um, as dangerous as he is, you know, I, I know where I don't want to be, and I know where I don't want to stay. So, um, the strategy is really staying out of that danger zone. Um, but also, at the same time, it's just you know, for me to continue to have the sense of urgency that I have uh, in training in, inside the octagon. Yeah, he was one round from being the UFC welterweight champion. What did you learn mm -hmm. from watching that fight against Johnny Hendricks? You know, I, I learned a lot about both guys. Um, you know, Johnny and I were, were scheduled in the past, and, and uh, didn't happen either. But now it's it's Robbie. But you know, they're both they're both similar styles. They're both powerful guys. They're both uh, they're both willing to trade. And uh, you know, I, I actually had I, I thought Robbie was going to do it. And, uh, and you know, the fifth round, I, I would I, Johnny kind of stole stole the fight. But um, you know, I learned a lot about both guys. You know, for for me, it's 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 a lot of it's timing and a lot of it's speed. And, and I got to be uh, I got to be on my t on top of my game. Well, with Johnny on the shelf due to his bicep surgery, the list of contenders for the welterweight title appears to be longer than ever. Where do you think the winner of this fight stands in the division? You know, it's, it's, it's an exciting time to be a welterweight in the UFC. Um, you know, Robbie Lawler's number two right now, I believe, and, and uh, again, it's going to create more opportunity for me. I, I just got to be focused in, in uh, bringing my A game, and that's all I can really ask for. But, uh, you know, I know when I'm, when I'm at my best, I can beat anyone in the world. When UFC 173 is in the books, what has to have gone right for you to have won this fight? Well, for me, at the end of the day, I gotta, <clears throat> I gotta stay disciplined. You know, I gotta be, I gotta be smart and, and not, <clears throat> not fight where Robbie feels comfortable. So, like I said, when I, when I'm on top of my game, I know I can, uh, I know I can beat anyone in the world. But it comes down to a lot of it comes down to those, those small inches, um, timing, um, you know, sticking to a strategy and, and having the discipline to stay to that strategy for, uh, for 15 minutes. Special thanks to Jake Ellenberger for joining us. Jake, best of luck May 24th. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That'll do it for MMA Live Extra. Be sure to stick with the MMA page here on ESPN.com as we'll be covering UFC 173 live from Las Vegas. For Jake Ellenberger, I'm Phil Murphy. Thanks for watching.